So despite the fact that the Indianapolis Colts were not able to have a first round pick since they traded it away to get DeForest Buckner, uh, they were still able to get a high talent in the in last uh, draft by getting Jonathan Taylor with the 41st overall pick. Uh, you know, it's a pretty good thing. Uh, decision I think for them if they're trying to be competitive now which it appears they are I mean we kind of already figured that with the way they traded away their first round pick and also went out and signed Philip Rivers but they're ready to be competitive now it seems they want to be at least if not this year next year but probably this year uh and you know listen Drafting a running back is a great way, if you're trying to be competitive now, to be successful. As we all know, halfbacks tend to really burst onto the scenes, and sometimes the best year of their career will be their rookie year. In fact, it's not uncommon for that to happen. So, going out and getting Taylor, it makes a lot of sense, in my opinion. There's a lot of things he can do well. Uh, we'll start things off with this play. What's going to happen is that uh, it's going to be uh, uh, a halfback, sort of a wheel route to the top of the screen. Uh, so, you know, the receiver runs down, halfback runs up, so he'll be the only person in that area. And, you know, he runs over, he makes the catch. Obviously, the player who's in charge of covering him also runs over to try to get in that area. So, you know, at this point, the goal here is try to turn the corner, and maybe if you can break a tackle, you can get a touchdown, because, you know, you're that close to the end zone. But, of course, you also would like to see if you can get the first down, or at least get as close to the first down marker as possible. This is the second down and 10, so... If you only gain five yards, now you have a third down and five. If you only gain two yards, you know, now it's definitely not a good situation. So he has to gain as many yards as possible, but he is able to turn the corner, get around that tackle, and get into the end zone for a touchdown. You know, good speed. He's able to be successful through the passing game. And I think that'll matter for the Colts. I really do. I think that could definitely uh, help them. Now, this is another example of him being successful through the passing game. What's going to happen is that it's a cover one play, and that's going to be his route. So he's going to run to the outside, but then run in. So, you know, this isn't typically what they'll have halfbacks do. Usually they don't give halfbacks moves like this, but, you know, for Taylor, uh, they trust him. He can run routes pretty well, so they are going to give him a move. And if it being a third down and six, running a route that only gets you a couple of yards doesn't really do too much. I mean, maybe it does because, you know, you're at the 50. Maybe if it's a, a fourth down and two, then you do go for it, whereas fourth down and six, maybe you don't. But, you know, virtually speaking, it doesn't help you too much to get four yards. You want to get at least six. Uh, and anyways, watch how he runs this route. Watch how right after the ball is snapped, you are going to notice that he kind of stops like this. And this could mean a lot of different things. But again, oftentimes if a receiver was doing this, you'd expect that the receiver would then be cutting towards the middle. But since he's a halfback going up against a linebacker, there's a little bit of leeway. But also, look at his acceleration once he starts going again towards the middle of the field and how he's able to just get relatively open. Uh, it's a pretty easy throw right there. And, you know, he's a good route runner for a halfback. These are halfback routes. It's not like he's going out wide. And, you know, he's not a Le'Veon Bell-style good route runner or a Christian McCaffrey-style good route runner where they'll legitimately consistently be going out wide and, being able to run routes as a receiver, that's not really where he's at. But in terms of the routes that a halfback has to run from the backfield, he does a very good job at those routes. But he's also pretty good at one other thing, and that's running the football. You know, that's kind of important for a running back. Uh, and uh, like, take a look at this play, for example. Um, they're going to see those three blocks right there. None of them are very important. The key block to take a look at is actually going to be that one right there. And the reason is because that's where Taylor's decision is going to be made. Once he gets to the second level, he's going to have to make a decision. Like, watch. So, everyone else makes their blocks pretty well. He's able to run up. And now, at this point, it would be hard for Taylor to totally know which direction he should go to. You know, I mean, there's only one block still there. And there's also a couple of other uh, defensive players who are on either side. So, it's not like he can just try to bounce it to one side or anything. He pretty much has to kind of try and wait until he sees where one of those blocks is going, but he also has to get there quickly enough that he can try to get around another defender. So he's going to have to move quickly, but also make this read quickly. But he does both of those. He moves quickly, and he's also able to not allow anybody to get significant contact on him because of how quick he moved. And, you know, despite the fact that three different players touched him, none of them were able to bring him down. But that's largely because they just didn't have significant contact on him. And the reason why they didn't was because he made that read quickly enough that he was able to get through the gap quick enough that neither one were able to really wrap him up. And 
Uh, that's just kind of uh, what he can do. He's a very fast guy. He's a big guy, not easy to bring down, and smart. I mean, listen, he checks off all the boxes. There is no negative in Jonathan Taylor's game, in my opinion. Uh, I think that he can do pretty much anything well. Uh, I really do. For Wisconsin, I think a lot of people will say, you know, Wisconsin, uh, they had a great running game in general. It wasn't just Jonathan Taylor. But honestly, I mean, he definitely was doing his part. And he's definitely the kind of guy where if he had to make a guy miss, he wouldn't make a guy miss. Like on this play, uh, you're going to see those three blocks right there. Uh, so, uh, basically what's going to happen is since there's a double team and the double team isn't going to totally, uh, you're not going to be able to get off this double team. It's going to actually mean that two Illinois players are going to be completely unblocked right there. Typically you would like to have, uh, a fullback run up and he blocks one of them and then someone gets off a double team and blocks the other. That's not going to be able to happen because, uh, a defensive player is going to do a good job of clogging that up, which basically just is a long way of saying uh, if there's going to be a situation where right here, right after the ball is snapped, there's going to be a defensive player who can run over and try to make a tackle on Taylor. So, okay, not really Taylor's fault, but now there's somebody in the backfield. This is going to be tough for him to pull off and tough for him to try to find a way to get into the end zone. But watch what he's going to do and watch how he's going to just run up the middle, make a quick move, and then he's able to power through and get into the end zone for a touchdown. It's just those those quick little subtle moves, you know, how he sort of shifts to the middle and then gets to the outside. Uh, and again, that awareness to realize what's going on quick enough and make that play, really it's his awareness. That's what I think is going to set him apart and why he is such a talented halfback and why many even consider him the best halfback uh, in the draft. Um, I didn't, but I think that he's, uh, he's in my top three. So I think that he's very talented. There's one more thing I wanted to talk about, and this is something that maybe doesn't get, it's, it's kind of hard to totally evaluate when watching college, how it'll translate to the NFL, but it was definitely such a key part of him in college was a play like this where, uh, you're going to see three one-on-one -on -one matchups in Really, those blocks are all going to be done well, but that Nebraska player, you know, he's the next guy closest to that area who will have to try to run and make a play. He's the closest unblocked man on this play. Uh, so he's the one that's going to try to run in and make a play. So basically what happens is that's going to be a run. Uh, you're going to see that Taylor runs all the way to the outside. And so now, you know, you have a Nebraska player who can run over and try to make this play. Admittedly, uh, it's a defensive back here, so no, no spectacular tackler here but uh that rhymed unintentionally but moving on uh you're gonna see that what he's gonna try to do is he's gonna try to just dive and just sort of take Taylor out he's in decent position and even if he doesn't uh fully get Taylor down there's other players in the area but what makes Taylor so good really I feel like it's his leg strength and watch how uh you know this player's gonna try to take him out and you know not only is he not able to but Taylor Wall compromise still finding a way to stay on his feet and picking up the first down I mean that's Mike Allstott-esque right there with uh, his ability to stay on his feet really a tremendous play and I think that uh, his balance on that play is something that's really key you know balance is something that I always talk about doesn't get talked about enough in football that's probably my my one thing that I would value a lot more than other people tend to value is balance is so important and being able to be balanced matters a lot and he's able to stay balanced on that play uh and you know that's allows him to pick up a first down one if he didn't do that he wouldn't have even you know gotten uh close to the first down so that's kind of just what I like about Taylor is again he checks off all the boxes for me uh, when I watch his tape I don't see any thing he can't do I really don't I think he's a very talented player I think people are kind of getting this idea that he's like a a downhill back or something that's not the case this guy can do it all he certainly can so for the Colts I mean listen it, it seems pretty clear to me that they're trying to be competitive next year we'll see how it goes I mean you know uh Philip Rivers has at times looked very good in recent memory but also uh last year he threw a lot of interceptions so I do think that a large part of their season as much as it is like cliche to say it all comes down to the quarterback a lot of it could really come down to the quarterback next season I could really see that happening but at the same time I also do feel like uh you know this is someone who can really help them and if if Taylor can become like a, a guy who runs the ball a lot and they become more of a run heavy team well then Philip Rivers doesn't have to sling the ball a bunch like he had to with the Chargers which could help him a lot as well so you know, uh, we'll see. There's definitely, I think the Colts are going to be one of the more interesting teams to watch next year to see really how they do. 
I'm definitely looking forward to that. But I think Taylor is a good pick. Uh, I think most people would agree with that. I think we, we're pretty much all on on board there that Taylor is a pretty good player. But what do you guys think? You know, let me know in the comments below. Do you agree with this pick? Are you someone who thinks they could have found someone better? I always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.